now have uh, my camera to the bottom right, so hopefully this helps you guys. If it annoys you, I'll probably miss the comments, but the YouTube uh, upload will uh, um, not have the video camera. So, all right, guys, so uh, let's get started. Let's talk to you today about uh, how to trade single reversal patterns. <clears throat> so, let's do a quick recap. And knowing me, it probably won't be quick. <laughs> but I'm kind of doing these webinar series as uh, kind of a, kind of in a series to kind of put things together for you guys. So if you haven't watched the other couple of videos yet, um, I'm kind of trying to put these together for you guys. So I'll probably put the links below in this video. Uh, but these are a couple of videos I did that are very important on uh, how to trade bull flags and bear flags using the 9 EMA. And then also how to draw trend lines and support and resistance levels. I gave you guys a different visual right here. So you'll see this one right here with the 9 EMA has the moving average lines on the chart. This one right over here does not have the moving average lines on the chart. Some people like them, some people don't. It's easier to draw trend lines many of times without the moving average lines. Uh, but then once you know how to draw trend lines, then you could always put the moving average lines on your chart, have them on your same screen, or you might have a separate screen, um, kind of like, <clears throat> kind of like this, right? You know, you might have a screen with stocks you're watching with the moving average lines over like this, and then trade with maybe a. Oh, this one's not a clean chart. I actually want to pull up a clean chart for you guys right now. So this one has moving average lines. Let's go to spy layout, uh, no indicators. Here we go. Daily, let's do this. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do no indicators to show you guys. So we're going to do trend lines and we're going to show reversals. And uh, so again, going back to what I was just showing you guys, these two videos are very important because they're going to kind of bring things together. Like I've been trying to talk to you guys, uh, candlesticks are the key in the name of the game to everything when trading. And again, go over to our website if you haven't been over there yet, bullishbears.com, take our free courses. But right down here, I keep bringing your attention to our ebook, our candlesticks ebook right here, which you can download and our two courses and you'll see right over here what we're going to talk about today is reversal patterns this video i'm going to just focus in on more single reversal patterns um but there's again there's kind of like with candlesticks remember like i was telling you guys every time somebody buys and sells a stock around the world they leave a pattern right and those patterns give very important clues on support and resistance levels, right? Buy low, sell high. You know, look, you wanna buy at support, sell at resistance, or when you're shorting, you wanna sell at resistance levels, cover at support levels, right? So sell high, buy low if you're shorting. So when you put these patterns together, remember there's a lot of candlestick patterns to be aware of. There's bigger patterns overall, and then there's smaller patterns. You see the very, and, and then there's patterns within the patterns. The video I did the other day on how to trade bull flags and bear flags, those are very popular, you know, bullish and bearish patterns. But then you'll start to see kind of uh, <clears throat> these two and three candlestick patterns are part, they make up part of bull flags and bear flags many of times, right? They're just, you know, you'll you'll see right here, this, this three inside up, it looks and it basically is a bear flag, right? Um, you know, depending on this, even you know, not the evening star pattern, but uh, you guys will see what I'm saying. But pull, uh, pay attention to this, right? So you'll see the bigger patterns like cup and handles and V bottoms and all the big patterns. When you drill them down, you'll have things like bull flags and bear flags. And then when you drill them down even further, you'll see these two and three candlestick patterns. And then going down even further, you'll start to see single candlestick patterns. You pay very close attention to dojis, right? Dojis are very, very important. Uh, when you go to our ebook, <clears throat> another thing to be aware of are spinning tops. You'll see the difference being dojis don't have a really big, they have a very thin 
uh, real body, right? Kind of looks like a cross or a, a plus sign. But dojis, again, they have a small, very tiny uh, real body. And then when you go into spinning tops, they have a bigger real body. Similar concept as a doji, uh, but, you know, they have a bigger real body. And then you'll see other things. I'm not going to go through the whole ebook, but you'll see. Then you'll right over in here, high wave candles. Looks a lot. This candle right here is a high wave candle. Looks a lot like a spinning top. It just got longer wicks, longer shadows. And these are nasty, right? So these you'll see these a lot with uh, with uh, penny stocks, right? Penny stocks are notorious for these high wave candles. And when you get trapped in those, they are not fun. It, they still happen, obviously, on larger securities, too. Uh, but, you know, very common with penny stocks. Then you see long legged dojis. Looks like a doji, just has a longer leg, right? And then you'll see things. OK, there's doji gravestone doji right so again i'm not going to go through all of these we're just going to just kind of zone in right you see they all have a similar <coughs> they have a similar uh they're telling you a similar story be aware of a potential reversal these happen many of times many of times all on all chart time frames and they happen with all types of securities whether it's large cap penny stocks uh it doesn't matter what type of security you're looking at and they happen many a times at the tops of uptrends and at the bottoms of downtrends, right? So there's bullish reversals at the bottom of downtrends that reverse up and then bearish reversals that, you know, happen at resistance and fall down, right? So again, remember guys, patterns and then patterns with inside pattern, inside patterns, right? Shooting star patterns, right? You see how they all have very similar looks to them? They just have many a times different wicks and shadows. And it just happens, uh, you know, it's just a matter of when you see these, you know, compared to an uptrend or a downtrend, it's just signifying pay close attention, right? Hanging man candlestick. That looks like a hammer. But you'll see this is in an uptrend. It looks like a hammer, but it's at resistance. That's a hanging man. We'll look at some of these in a bit. And then you have dragonfly dojis right here. Again, looks kind of like a long-legged doji. You'll see that actually this is supposed to have the top missing off of it. But it's basically looks like a hammer with just a lower, smaller real body. Inverted hammer, just an upside-down hammer. So you guys see how these all have... And then hammers, right? Hammer, very, very important. Pay close attention to these at the bottom of downtrends. Again, guys, not to confuse you, but blue... Just for artistic and our colors, we have blue as bullish, orange as bearish. Typically, on a stock chart, uh, green is bullish or white is bullish or red and black is bearish. So, is this making sense for you guys so far? Just kind of seeing this. I'll answer your questions, guys, uh, at the end of the stream. Sorry, guys, I'm just uh, singularly focused. There's a lot of different, I'm, I personally feel I'm a huge fan of bull flags, bear flags and reversals. All right. So let's now take kind of what I'm showing you guys here and let's look at stock charts, real world charts. So you actually see here, guys, here's our bull, our reversals wallpaper. And as I was showing you guys, uh, as well, we have our bullish patterns one over here. And then you'll see, you'll see the other day I did basically bull flags, which you can see bull flags similar to a falling wedge, just a longer, you know, it's longer with the falling wedge. Uh, bear flags, which I'll show you right here. Bear flag looks like falling three, right? And a rising wedge, right? So you can see and bear pennants you see how they all are kind of their similarities so this is where <clears throat> when you see something many a times you can kind of put it together um and you'll see oh look at that so i have the reversals over here you know what? i should have probably put the bearish patterns in re under the reversals one but i needed space but anyways here's our wallpapers and that i suggest you guys again you know interchange them out you know, once a week or once a month, just kind of let this stuff go into your subconscious. All right, so let's go back to the trusty old spy. 
So as you were seeing, you know, showing, I'm going to stay with the same security. So if you're watching the other videos back, uh, I'm going to use the same kind of symbols. So you can kind of start putting these puzzles or the pieces to the puzzle uh, together. But as you'll see, this is a clean chart of the SPY, which basically tracks the overall market. <clears throat> so now we're going to zone in, just take a quick visual on those single candles, right? Shooting star, doji, doji, or spinning top. You can call it a do. Well, this is more of a spinning top, but doji, spinning top. This is where I was saying, this is more spinning top-ish right here. But again, spinning top, doji could signify the same thing. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't, you know, don't get, I always say, don't get bogged down in the minutia of things. But be aware of these single candlesticks. They tell a very important story. And many a times, again, not many times, it happens all the time. The single candlestick will give you an early warning for the third candlestick. So just to show you guys real quick here, that red candle is basically a, where is it? You guys see this? That's a shooting star. This has a longer wick, doesn't matter. It's still telling the same story, right? Price is in an uptrend, shooting star. What happens many a times after the shooting star is the third candlestick, which becomes an evening star, right? And you'll see an evening star is, let's go back to reversals. Right here, kind of price goes up. And you'll see this is a little bit different. Uh, this is kind of a doji, but you can call it a shoe, you know, again, different colors. Not everything's going to be red or green, right? Sometimes they're different colors. Goes up, gives you a little bit of an indecision, and then third candle falls down, right? So goes up, spinning top, shooting star, whatever you want to call it. And then third candle confirms the reversal downwards, right? What do you do, right? This is a monthly chart of the SPY, right? <clears throat> and as you guys will hear, I'm, I'll save the rant maybe to the, hopefully I'll, I'll try not to do <laughs> a rant. My last two videos, I did a lot of rants because I, all right, I'm gonna stay on track. I'm not gonna go on rants, but I try to tell you guys, right? This stuff is not hocus pocus. It's very important and traders around the world pay attention to all of these patterns. They're incredibly important. And you'll see, Right here, this red candle is a star pattern or a shooting star. This was a huge warning that was giving you a heads up of potentially this candle before it formed. Now you see these, this three pattern right here is an evening star pattern, which is a reversal of an uptrend to the downside. You can say, well, okay, cool. Now, how, do you, how does that work with trend lines, right? So now remember I was showing you guys with trend lines and the importance of them. Someone who's actually mentioning on the video yesterday, well, hey, it gets a little bit confusing of like multiple trend lines. So you can see just kind of like, again, it's not perfect all the time. You know, you can do like this and then you can kind of go back and then, you know, where is it? Uh, let's go to a monthly. Right, we're connecting as many peaks and as many valleys as possible. So you might look at this and be like, oh man, you see I'm just kind of connecting some peaks and connecting as many peaks and valleys as I can. Again, it's not gonna always be perfect. Someone who is saying, well, that's too many lines in my chart, I get confused. Well, <clears throat> again, I'm just showing you the idea of it. Um, very important though, and the trend lines all matter, depend on what, they all kind of depend on what type of trader you are, right? If you're a day trader, you're gonna have probably a lot more intraday uh, trend lines and stuff like that because you're getting in and out quicker, um, but trend lines are very important. But I wanna say to you guys, if, if trend lines, if it's too many lines or it gets too kind of crazy for you, that's where you might wanna just ride the nine strategy like I told you guys with having um, you know, the moving average lines, you might get an entry, just ride the nine and get out, right? You still don't wanna ride the nine if you don't know candlestick patterns, right? You still wanna know patterns ideally overall, but if it's easier for you, you know, when price is above the nine EMA, 
it's bullish. You know, when it's below the 90 EMA trending downwards, then it's basically bearish. All right. <clears throat> so let's go back to trend lines again. So let's just say kind of right in here. So you see, let's go back over in here. You see, it's not perfect, but you can see how I'm kind of connecting these peaks and they go outwards right here, go up like this, right? Kind of some peak levels. You see when I go down here, I'm connecting these, kind of these valleys right down in here. So you see I'm connecting some peaks and some valleys. This is a megaphone pattern, very important. So now let's zoom in here and let's start looking at potential reversal patterns, right? Buy at support levels, sell at resistance levels. We went over that yesterday in the trend lines and support and resistance levels uh, video. Now let's look at potential entries of reversals to the downside or reversals to the upside. You will see these things on all charts and all time frames. I'm showing you a monthly. We'll, we'll, we'll look at some other time frames, daily, intraday, stuff like that. So what you see on this monthly chart happens on daily charts, weekly charts, five minute charts, hourly charts, month, minute charts. So now we're gonna zoom in specifically on these uh, single candlestick reversal patterns. Look, there's so many all over the place. I'm just gonna, I mean, I'm just, man, there's so many even as I do. It's almost easier many a times, guys, to bring your focus in when you do your trend lines. So you could literally have this monthly trend line or wherever it is and just kind of zoom in. You can say, okay, look back here, guys, right? You see how I'm connecting these peaks and these peaks back here in 2008 and nine go all the way out to the future. Just like these lines out here go out to the future on your charts, right? It could go out to 2020, 30, 40, 50, you know, whatever it is. They just extend to the future. Now, very important you can say well none of us knew you know coronavirus was going to happen the market was going to fall i would say well true you know probably many of us didn't know coronavirus is going to happen however <laughs> we could have looked at the charts and said something's something's going on and you can see right here guys look this is so important you guys see at this massive resistance level at all time highs you have this red shooting star candle that is like i can't tell you how big of a warning that is that's like that should terrify you if you're bullish and you have a 401k and you have your life savings and you're 30 or 40 years old and your entire life savings your hundred thousand your five hundred thousand your million in your brokerage account whatever it is that candle should terrify you if your entire life savings is risky Again, we are not financial advisors, right? But what I try to draw your attention to is, like I said in my video yesterday, I would never tell anybody on, on the planet to ever buy any stock. I don't care if it's Apple or whether it's a crappy pump and dump penny stock. Never buy up there, right? That's resistance. Look, if you look and that kind of that slope down all the way, that's a top of a megaphone pattern. The risk up there is gigantic. And that one single shooting star candlestick is telling you danger, <clears throat> danger, warning, warning, warning. So again, not uh, we're not financial advisors, but somebody like posted a question asking about, you know, something to do with like previous levels, like what can you do? What you can do is kind of simple, which, you know, many financial advisors uh, won't like. But if you were managing things on your own or you were in control, if you're way up on your 401k, you could go in super safe funds up here until market pulls back down to here. So for instance, something you could have done, hindsight's 2020, right? Let's say you have, you know, your demographic says be in risky funds up here, but you're like, hey, I'm gonna go safe for a bit, watch for it to bounce down here. Then maybe you'd go back risky down here, buy at support levels, right? So this is why people get burned many times in their 401ks, right? Again, this is not gonna be a video on that. I do enough rants on that, but I, I, want it, I want this to be an emotional experience to take it in just because I want you to be aware of how the importance of this candle right here tells just a gigantic, a gigantic story, right? So 
Now, many times you won't get small candle reversal. Now, obviously this is a really big, you know, the coronavirus thing, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on, right? So you won't always have small reversal candlesticks. This is a different type of reversal pattern. This is called a piercing pattern so far. Again, we're not gonna go into that. You'll see in our ebook and our wallpaper. Sorry guys, I take water, I put on mute, so I gotta <laughs> make sure I come back. All right, so look right over here. That's a huge reversal candle. I, I bring your attention to this one because all the other ones will start to make sense. Now, many times just because there's a trend line up like this, it doesn't mean price will always go right back up there. You'll see here was a green one, right? This is not a red one, but this is a doji or a spinning top candle right below this level. So you'll see this green candle hit it. This one didn't. Again, just because you have support and resistance levels doesn't mean price is always going to touch it. It's a guide. This small little reversal after this uptrend is a warning that it might want to come down. <clears throat> if we go back earlier, guys, you have this bigger overall trend line. You could even zoom in. Remember, the trend is your friend, right? So you could even go up to like, you know, you can go in here. See this line? It could extend depending if you're going wicks or bodies. If you're connecting the real bodies then right here it's warning you that it's about to break the trend you could also do right here connect the wicks here you know this is a warning ahead of time so again you can have a couple trend lines on here depending you know when you want to you can go trend line overload if you want but you guys see it's about to break that trend at resistance so it's at overall bigger resistance levels and then you can kind of zoom in on these you can go into a daily chart to get cleaner as well which i'll show you but you see how price is starting to break that trend if you zoomed into a daily you may have been able to get you probably would have been able to get out which you will we'll look at that in a moment earlier this is the monthly so you would have had earlier warnings on a weekly or a monthly chart or a weekly or a daily chart to get out but this single candle is warning you at resistance. This one's warning you. Doesn't mean now, guys, many a times, look, you'll see these spinning tops and those candles happen and they'll still continue to go up, right? So you'll say, why does that happen? Why does it always go up? Well, many times, again, the stock market's a collective, you know, buying and selling of, you know, securities all around the world. You know, but, you know, it doesn't always happen foolproof, like only at these levels. You can, this is where you would draw like your trend lines, right? So you can just draw, you know, kind of like this and see, right? Here's another kind of trend line. And many times right here, it's just riding this trend. And then when it starts to break right here, warning, get out. But this is a huge warning candle right there, <coughs> this red candle. This is a nasty, I don't even know what you want to call that thing. That's just a just a nasty looking candle. So sometimes, or many times, you'll see these. It's not high wave-ish. It's not spinning top. It's just a nasty looking candle. This is where, again, mitigating risk and being aware of these patterns. This is a monthly candle. You could have saw this probably warning happen within a daily uh, chart or ahead of time, right? So this is a way, guys, just to see, you'll see these smaller candles we're talking about doesn't mean, oh, when it happens, oh, it's just going to go down or it's going to go up. Pay attention to them close at resistance levels and support levels. But many times as it's riding a trend, it just turns into a, a bull flag, right? So remember when I was showing you guys? Remember these patterns, they make up several things. So a spinning, so what looks like a spinning, like these, see these dojis right up over here and up over in here. This shows potential reversals, and you'll see many times major corrections, but also it makes up these things called bull flags and bear flags, right? So this is where it's consolidation back, and you'll see many a times it's to the moving average lines. So a price goes up, consolidates back down, it's near a support level, it breaks out, and then you'll see it's kind of consolidating up here, and you can just do your trend line. When it breaks, you get out, right? So again, not gonna go more into the bigger patterns. I still wanna just keep drawing your attention to the smaller ones, but I kinda wanna just put these visuals together and you'll see down here. 
here is kind of a not a hammer it's kind of a long-legged doji kind of hammerish long-legged doji it's more like a long-legged doji but you'll see it kind of uh what happened here is look right over here see this one right here it's kind of a spinning top doji candle near resistance a little bit below it and then it consolidated look spinning tops several of them you know you can kind of lump these together spinning tops and then what did it do it reversed and went down and what did it do it hit the lower trend line the buyers came back in again volume very very key you know very key in confirming things uh, is volume pay attention to these volume bars the buyers came in at support held support goes up and you'll see some you know goes up a little bit traders take profits member and then what did it do it pulls back you know because people if they miss this entry many traders are going to look to get an entry down over here if they miss this one let the flag happen. this happens all the time on security any any security around the world guys it happens all the time every single day if you miss an entry you know it's the combination of the bulls and the bears duking it out then price comes down to support levels if it holds people that are going long they might look to take another entry up it's a battle of the bulls and the bears and the shorts and all that stuff right so remind me if i forget guys uh i want to show you how to trade the oh, okay let's just do it now right so let's go over to right here just so i don't forget how do you trade these right when price comes down like this kind of put like your levels right here right here <clears throat> so what typically happens on us and something like this is once it bounces off support you get an entry at the break of this candle above it so as it's breaking above here and then you would use a candlestick close below that as your stop and then that's where you're going to have to decide when you take your profits i showed you guys the strategy of a ride the nine when price closes below the nine ema you get out but other you know there's other traders that like to take profits you know short-term traders it breaks out they might take profits here watch for price to consolidate here then you'll see a candle kind of right here as it breaks out here they'd use a candle close below this as their stop goes out they might kind of look to take profits right at this candle and then maybe look for re-entry somewhere down in here ride it up and then get out right it's all depending on your risk but you can see the risk gets crazier the more you know you got to be careful it's not foolproof but after your you know first and second pullbacks when it starts to get to the third one or more it starts to get a little bit more difficult the candles get a little bit bigger many times and then it gets crazier right so that's when you start a lot of people are looking and it gets a lot more nuts and you'll see you guys see how the candles get crazier up here than they are kind of back here you know again price is getting near resistance you know lots of things going on behind the scenes right and just regular traders in general okay so that's with a bullish play right so bullish you would look at uh you know stuff like this again don't just trade this you have to understand it but as price breaks above this candle you would get in at the break of the top of this candle using a close below that candle as your stop right if you looked on this bull flag right over here as it breaks above this line boom you'd look your entry there you'd use a stop below that candle then you would have to decide if you want to get in on one of these spinning top candles. If you did, you could use a close below any of these as your stop. Definitely you'd get out on this candle. This would have been a huge warning. <laughs> so you guys see this? Single candles, right? Near resistance, comes back down, touch support, right? Then you ride the trend. When the trend is broken, you get out. This is a monthly chart. Put it to whatever chart you feel best um you know whatever your trading style is now that's on a long play right so we're going on long plays how do you do short plays short to the reversal side so if you're shorting stocks or if you're uh you know buying puts or any type of bearish uh what you call it option strategy just do the inverse find the highs of this candle right up here and the lows of this shooting star and what you would do with this 
is you would, when you see candles like this, again, you have to know other support and resistance levels. Don't just trade this without knowing previous. Remember, what happens in the past affects the future. Right now, there's nothing in the past over here. So that's this is definitely even more of a warning sign. But if there was some resistance up over here or something, it might be a little bit different, right? But there's no resistance over here. This is a huge warning of a pullback and it was breaking that trend. So what people would do taking a short here or a bearish position on the market, they would short at the break below this shooting star candle here, and then they would put a stop above that candle. And then remember you decide when you're taking profits. I showed you the ride the nine strategy. Down here, you could look at the lower trend lines. You better start covering probably down in these areas. It's near support, but that's where you gotta know candlestick patterns, right? So. That's how you kind of take a short up there. Uh, so that make this making sense for you guys so far, guys? Let me read some of your comments. You love Penny, Sarah. <laughs> love it. This is so helpful. Love it. Need glasses, yeah. Computer glasses, super important. Um, so this is where you go short. Let's look again at, we'll do some more of them. Repetition is the key. I'm gonna look at some pennies for you guys in a moment, just showing you the bigger overall market and then how you look at this with penny stocks. Kind of the same thing, guys, right? Find these small, remember, mitigate your risk. Buy low, sell high, manage risk with small candlestick patterns. You're gonna see how it's gonna get way more nuts with penny stocks. But just because it gets way more stuck, nuts with penny stocks this is typical with penny stocks right here these candles that you see on the monthly these high wave candles for anybody that's traded penny stocks these happen all the time on daily charts as well as intraday this is where you get nailed if you're not careful this is why with penny stocks you are with penny stocks it's it's not so often that you're just able to just ride a trend like this you know, you, if you miss one entry, you may get a second, but you gotta be careful depending on the security because if you're not careful, you get in down over here, just pretend this is a one minute chart. This could just nail right down like this and give back all your profits. So you gotta, you know, pay attention to these candlestick patterns, especially with penny stocks. But with everything, guys, don't just get so comfortable just because it's the stock market overall. News happens all the time, right? So this candlestick right here, right here, doji. You would take a short below this candle, use a candle close above this as your stop. And then you would look at support levels, right? This would be a warning to cover. Same thing with this right here. So price falls below this, you'd use a candle close above this as your stop. Again, this is a monthly chart. Right, so you better start taking your profits along the way and daily, hour, five minute, whatever your trading style is. But you would take a short below this, candle close below above as your stop. This is where now you guys see do you see how it gets a lot more difficult if you don't know patterns? A candle like this, you guys see this red candle right here, you guys see how it's much more difficult. What do you do with this? Do you go short or do you go long, right? I don't play around with these candlesticks at all. I don't play with those. It's They're nasty. I don't play with these candlesticks over here. They're nasty. I personally like these, right? The bull flags pulls up, small candlestick, get in, decide when I'm gonna take my profits, right? I uh, I also try to avoid you know, I like this, a break above this. I like a little bit less risk, risk to be honest. I like smaller whisk, wicks below. I don't mess around with these either. I don't mess around with these high wave, like bigger spinning tops. I'm not a fan of those. I like these. Again, it's just my preference, guys. Everybody's preference is different. I like clarity. I like this. I like this. I like this. I don't like this. Again, I don't like the bigger real bodies. I like smaller real bodies of things I can risk off, right? Smaller, you know, this one I'd consider, but just remember there's the risk. 
you know, 196.35, let's say in this one, to 181. That's a $15 risk candle. Again, that's just saying if I was trading SPY, if you're in options, you get the wrong, you know, that's where, again, you know, hindsight's 2020. This thing could break out or give a false breakdown, come down here, trade sideways, and mess up your options contract if you don't have the right, uh, you know, you're not doing the right trading style, right? So going back over here, guys, so now you guys see right here, going back now, let's zoom into, let's zoom. All right, so you guys see, now here's a green shooting star, right? Doesn't have to be red. Don't get faked out just because something's a different color. You can say, oh, that's a bullish candle. Look at it though. Small real body, shooting star. And what happens with this one, right here, just put lines above and bow. Connect the peak in the valley. And then you short when price falls below this uh, candle, this green candle. Candlestick close below as your stop above as your stop, then you consider taking your profits along the way. Uh, again, this is a monthly chart. You'd probably cover more down here. Uh, again, support levels. There's all other support and resistance levels. Very important. This right here, you see how these. I'm not going to really get into tweezer tops. It's this is what I was trying to say, guys. Not everything is perfect, right? You can say, well, that's not tweezer tops. Just to show you guys, I I will show it to you because I'm. I'm that way right here tweezer tops two co-equal tops this second candle can't break above this one it's hitting the ceiling tweezer tops are huge reversal patterns right so what is that doing it's putting kind of two spinning tops or kind of indecision candles together near resistance levels right below be careful you know and as price falls below here you know, below this candle right here, people start taking a short. Now, you'll see, guys, this is a perfect example of where you can get faked out. This is why candlesticks are not foolproof, right? You have to pay attention. You can see many people would have taken a short right below right here, and then what did it do? It bounced back up. Fake outs happen all the time. This could get people to cover their short position, fake them out, and then, then it starts to fall, and then wham. Right, that's where you have to mitigate your risk. Very important. All right, let's take a look at one or two more on here, and then we'll zoom into different time frames. You're welcome, guys. I'm glad this helps you guys. All right, perfect example, guys. Right, so now here. You guys see here's the uptrend, right? I'm just kind of connecting support levels, right? Connect as many peaks and valleys as possible. And you'll see kind of like, you know, it's not perfect, but kind of down in here. And then it kind of goes out, you know, it kind of goes out like over here. But, you know, there's, depending, I'd have to pull up a daily chart time frame. This is where you can zoom in better on trend lines. But you guys see it's kind of like a falling wedge-ish pattern kind of in here. But pay attention down at the bottom. Well, now look. So this right here could fake some people out. This could be a, a fake out, right? You see these green, this green candle kind of high wave at the bottom of this downtrend or near support. Many times buyers would look, this is a perfect. Yeah, I got to show you guys this. This is where you get nailed many times, but this happens all the time. And this is why risk management is so important. So right here, see this green candle right here, high and low. Here's where fake outs happen all the time. No, this happens on trade all the time. Any chart time frame, any stock. This is why candlesticks are not foolproof, but they're the best thing you can do uh, to trade. They're the best indicator. They're not foolproof. They work most, you know, not honestly more. The odds are more in your favor that they're going to go in the direction that you're, if you know candlesticks, than not, but they still fail all. They fail a lot, right? Right here. 
So this would have been a perfect example of where many traders, the longs would have come in at the break of this candle right over here. And they would use a candle close below, their, below this as their stop. Look what happened. Fake out went up, failed, boom, trapped the longs, and then it went down. You guys see that fake out? This candle wick above here, right above that. This is where it gets fake outs happen. That's why me personally, guys, I personally like smaller wicks and shadows. I like, you know, stuff like this. Shooting stars, smaller kind of wick up top, smaller candle risk. Me personally, I just, I'm not a fan of these bigger real bodies and bigger wicks and shadows. But you'll see, here's a perfect example of a fake out. False breakout, fell, and then it fell right down here. Uh, so you would have gotten, you know, you would have lost on this potentially if you only if you waited to close below this as your stop. Then look, a couple months later or whatever, now you have this green spinning top. So you can see, you know, it's you know, this is where you also got to draw your other trend lines coming down. Then you could see intraday and or daily charts and other charts. You would see this is a monthly chart, it would be clearer on a daily, you know, if you kind of brought kind of like in here and here you would have probably had an earlier warning to get out. Again, I don't want to go too much in depth on that. But you'll see on this candle here, you would... get in the break of that candle, close below this as your stop. Again, me personally, I don't like those huge, bigger wicks and shadows, but if you look at this, it's a green candle, volume coming in, break above this as your long, close below this as your short, and then, guys, right, connect your trend lines. So now we're looking back over in here, you can say, you know, connect some peaks right in here, you can see these are warning signs. There were several warning signs and it goes on. It doesn't mean just because you see one, it's gonna reverse. Sometimes you have lots of this consolidation and then you can kind of do, connect your peaks and valleys in here and see kind of your, here's your trend line for back then, right? So you're just kind of connecting peaks and valleys right here, you know, there's warnings. <sighs> All right. Sorry guys, I sigh because I go so long into showing stuff and there's so much more I wanna show you. So whatever, they're just gonna be <laughs> longer videos. <laughs> so, but guys, it's better to have it longer and learn this stuff than to not, right? And let's go back over. So you guys see kind of again, I, I show you guys, right? These hammers, so here's a hammer pattern, right? Hammer, small candlestick. This is my one of my favorite patterns right here, right? So I would just, I would, right here, it's kind of a bull flag, right? We're talking about bull flags, flag pull up, consolidation, green hammer, and price breaks that green hammer i'm not a fan of the red long-legged doji i'm a fan of this green hammer that's where i want if i'm going long this green hammer right at support the break above this candle i'm long candlestick close below this as my short and then or i'm sorry as my stop and then right here i got at the break of this candle candle close below this as my stop I draw my trend lines. See this? Draw my trend line. Where's the break? Boom. I'm out. Right there. Nasty looking high wave-ish spinning top-ish candle. I'm out. Gonzo, Jadunzo. I'm out right here. Broke the trend. I'm out. Long here, out here. Broke the trend. You can see consolidation. And this is where I was showing you guys up here. This is where things get crazy. I don't play around up here. This stuff's nasty. I don't play around up there. It's too, you guys see the candlesticks and the wicks and the shot? That's, they're nasty to play around with. I don't like that. I love that. That's my favorite, right? I absolutely love that. And so let's actually do, so my long guys, 
my long, this is my favorite long play right here. My absolute favorite. Bull flag, breakout, long at the break of this hammer. Close below this hammer as my stop. Ride the trend out when it's broken here. Guys, this is a monthly chart. Look at this and put it to your chart time frame. I can't tell you how important this is. This can be used for one minute, five minute, hourly, weekly, monthly, daily charts, whether it's Apple, Google, Netflix, or any penny stock security. Play around with the smaller candles. Stay, guy. And me personally, I'm just saying, I stay the heck away from that. Pay attention to this. Mitigate your risk. Stay the heck away from way out here. Again, just my preference. So that's my favorite long play. Short. I'm a huge fan of, let's go to a daily chart. I showed you guys the bearish, the bear flag. So I'm a f huge fan. What the heck? There we go. Huge, huge, huge fan of this. Price falls, bear flag, and then bam, right here. Bear flag, breaks the trend. The moment price starts to fall and break this trend below this green candlestick, I'm going short. Candlestick close above here as my stop. Go short, candlestick close above here as my stop. I'll give you a visual. Go short as it's falling below here. Candlestick close below as my stop. Then again, I showed you in the other videos, decide when you're taking your profits. Again, you can, when a candle closes above the nine, you can get out or you can look at other things at support levels. But guys, remember, like I was saying, the stuff I personally don't play around with, I'll, I play in this arena on the bull flags and bear flags. I stay the heck, I'll be politically correct or I'll be nice with my language. I stay the heck away from this. I ain't playing around with that. I don't like it. It's not my style. I would look over here again. This is where I would look to, uh, <clears throat> I'd let this song and dance play out over here. This whole, I'd let this play out. It's got an inverse head and shoulders ish pattern. That's, we teach you that in our courses, but I would start to look right over here. Right in here, I would have probably looked maybe at this green one, but you'll see guys right here, this is where you could get a little bit tricked out. It could have been hairy for a moment. This is where you gotta be careful just because something looks like something. You gotta be aware of the news. We're in the coronavirus. There's so many things going on, so much crazy stuff's going on. As it's breaking out of this, you could pretend, you know, go long again, candlestick close about below that as your stop. <sighs> okay. That is... I just only looked at SPY. <laughs> All right, let's go intraday on SPY. I'm gonna go with this. Is this making sense so far? I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna show you some penny stocks. Is this helping? I'm just gonna go along with this, guys. It's gonna be longer than I thought. But I just hope it's helping you guys. Awesome, glad it's helping you. Awesome, cool. All right, let's go intraday with SPY and then we'll look at a couple penny stocks that I showed you from yesterday. Just what I showed you guys, just go to, there's a five minute, right? Just kind of look at these things, right? Just pay attention to these candles. Now this is five minute, but you know, just kind of, so like just, we're just looking at those for a moment and then just kind of go back to what I said with trend lines, right? Kind of put it together, right? You can see, okay, price 
you know, went up in the morning. That's a bigger, that's a like a bearish engulfing candle. That's another two candlestick setup, but you'll see price kind of falls down like this. Me personally, again, guys, I still like smaller wicks and shadows. Me personally, some people like to mess with this. That's great. You know, you could, again, I just, I like really tight risk management. But as it's falling intraday on a five minute, you could have gotten in at the break of this candle, close below this as your stop, and then consider taking profits up here. Uh, again, I don't like huge wicks and shadows personally, you know, but up over in here, now remember, this is a whole other thing, guys, when you see these candles, remember I was telling you on the bigger charts, what happens over here is affected many times by what happens over here. And you can see this is a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. So that shooting star happened, and you'll see there was a fake out. This right shoulder broke above that left shoulder. It faked people out, and it still failed high a day. So you could take a short below this if you want. I still, I'm also not a huge, personally, I'm not really, I don't like shorting the right shoulder of a head and shoulder. I just, me personally, it just, I don't like playing around. I like more of like way up here. I don't like getting jerked around over here at times, but some people like this, right? You could take a short below this shooting star, use a candlestick close above as your stop, and then consider you know, when you're going to uh, take a profit, right? And cover your position. And how do you look at things again, right? Draw your trend lines. So as this is happening, connect kind of your trend lines up here, kind of going down here and say, well, are you going to cover down over here? Or are you going to wait for it to break out, right? That's where you got to decide your risk management. But if you took a short here, you know, down in these areas, you have the, you decide when you're going to cover right so now just now what did price do over here it breaks out again right you could risk off the breakout of this again i'm not a huge fan of those i like clearer i like stuff like these things but if you like playing around with the spinning top candles if you got an entry at the break of this because it's breaking out of the falling wedge you can get in at the break above this for a long close below this as you're short and then just you know, kind of draw your trend lines. So, right, if you're over in here, that red candle would have stopped you out. You know, or you would have not stopped out. You would have taken your profits, right? Then it pulls back, and what does it do? It turns into a bull flag, right? So it's like bull flag. It breaks out, consolidates again. Do you guys see this over and over and over? So this is what I was saying with day trading and stuff. You're gonna change these lines, you know? So you remove them and then, you know, you'll change them the other way, right? Goes up. What happens over in here? It's starting to fail the trend over in these areas. Maybe it's gonna reverse or consolidate, right? And then go forward again, right over here. Here's a perfect example right here. Remember I was showing you guys, be aware of like those shooting stars or spinning tops. Here's a high a day bubble candle, right? You got the bubble, shoot. All right, so you have that high a day bubble candle right here. Pay close attention to that. Just like the highs of the day and you wanna see the lows, you know, this changes the bubble throughout the day. But you can say, again, go back to what I was showing you in the beginning with SPY, right? So you kind of can con connect these. I think I might need a new video graphics card. If Dan's watching this, please, after Corona's over with and we can stop the social distancing, I need to get this thing fixed. I think I might need, you guys see how this, I'm, I'm trying to not swear on the stream, but this drives me, you know what, crazy. My screen just randomly does whatever. So anyways, connect the support levels right out here. You guys see, and then kind of back over. So connect some support levels right here and you can kind of do resistance. This is kind of really choppy, but you know, kind of like that or whatever, right? So you can see kind of a rising wedge, the channels up and down and up and down. 
Well, you this candle right here is breaking the trend, but this was a warning. This is a huge warning, and you get some other warnings throughout this. And then look, boom, high a day candle. This is where many traders will take a short below this shooting star, breaking the trend, close above as your stop. <coughs> when do you get out? Well, you decide when you like to take profits along the way, but as it's starting to fail, you know, I can connect these levels and down you guys see now there's an up channel down channel so you can decide you know if you want to get out when when it breaks above the 9 EMA or if you don't use moving average lines look for when it breaks and closes above the trend maybe right here you would have gotten out or you may have waited and then hey look down over here or down over in here this is where you decide when you're going to cover and then you'll see other reversal patterns and then it just goes up again, right? But me personally, again, guys, I don't mess around just to show you guys. My my thing is I don't, me personally, I do not like messing around with these big candles, right? I do not like messing around with that stuff. I don't like that stuff. I'll, you know, that's different because it's end of day. I like the smaller candlesticks, the smaller handle hammers. And that's a five minute. Let's go to a one minute and then we'll look at a penny stock, a couple penny stocks. So that's a five minute strategy. I showed you monthly. Same thing goes on a daily chart. So you'll see right here, price is open. It's kind of consolidating. It's doing that consolidation. Me personally, I don't mess around with this. I would actually really start to look at it right in here. I don't mess around with these red candles, but I would look at this and I would say, well, again, giving you a little bit more action here with mapping out pre-market highs. Remember we're doing support and resistance levels, right? So then there's uh, right here. There we go. Map out support and resistance levels, guys. So important, guys. This is such good stuff. I pat myself on the back. <laughs> you guys see this? This support level goes to the future. Price action opens up. What does it do? Kind of jerks around a little bit, comes back, forms a flag, bounces off support, Small little candlestick pattern, boom. You get in the break of that, what the heck. This candle, not these crazy looking candles here, small little candle, break above this as you're long, close below right here as you're short, as you're stop. And then you start looking at these support levels. You're getting in at the anticipation of the break of these potential levels. Now you gotta be aware of that's a head, that's a left shoulder, and you can see right here, this may have tricked some people out right there, a head, left shoulder, right shoulder, head and shoulders. And then boom, it hits some support, breaks out. Now you wanna see this candle break above that right shoulder, and that, I'm sorry, yeah, that right shoulder, see it clear the left shoulder, you can see there was some hesitation here. Boom, it breaks pre-market highs, guys, takes off. What do you do? Draw your trend line. So now we'll uh, just kind of do, you can do it like this, or you can kind of go, you know, depending on how tight you want to make it, depending on, you know, you can go like this. So if you want to flare out like this, you could wait until it breaks the trend out here, right? So you can see if I'm connecting these base levels, it goes out here. So if I got at the break above, right on this candle, I could wait and get out over here at the break of the trend. But I'm also giving back potential lots of profits out here because remember, it's uh, you know it's failing the trend line up here. 
So, you know, why give back those profits? Maybe take the profits up here and then look for potential re-entry as it pulls back, right? So that's when you draw your kind of your trend lines again, it's consolidation areas. Maybe take your profits as it's breaking the trend, wait for the consolidate, come back here, then show, okay, maybe it's gonna start a new trend. Maybe you look for re-entries again. You guys see, again, this is where day trading starts to really take place. Um, and then you'll see, you know, this consolidation where, what time is this at? Well, this is kind of morning, you know, the consolidation, right? Now you have kind of consolidation right here, warnings to the potential downside, right? The spinning tops, these smaller candles, you know, right here. Why is that stuff happening? I don't like, why is it happening? Well, you know, find these channels, right? And you can say, right, connect the peaks and the valleys like I've been showing you guys. Oh, here's a peak or a valley. A valley goes out to the future. Here's, uh, I'll actually just make it look a little bit better. Right here to here to here. You guys see I'm connecting what happened over here out to the future. You know, no surprise. Look at guys right here. What happened back over here and here affects here. These are like warning, 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 warning. We're at resistance warning comes back down. Buyers came back in. You'll see the candlesticks are bigger here. What's happening over here? Warning, it's not breaking and holding this levels over here. What do you have here? Potential start to a potential head and shoulders. We'll see. And yeah, voila. Boom. Look at that. Head, left shoulder, right shoulder. And then, so you'll see, kind of like it's breaking the trend out here. Here was a warning. You didn't have to wait for it to break the trend out here. This was a warning right up here, All right? So then it falls back down, goes back up. What are these? These are warnings. So again, you just kind of, right? Kind of comes down. Price goes up, breaks the trend, comes back down, some consolidation. What's it do? Goes back up, falling wedge, rising wedge, rising wedge, falling wedge, rising wedge, falling wedge, rising wedge, falling wedge, bull flag, bear flag, bull flag, bear flag, penance, penance. You guys seeing how all this stuff, very similar. Goes up, doji candle, boom, right here, people may, Again, if you like shorting head and shoulders, right shoulder, this right shoulder doesn't break the left shoulder in the head at the high of day. Traders may take a short right below here. You can see there was a little bit of fake that fake out that popped right back up, probably shook some people out. And then boom, you could take a short below. And then when do you get out? Well, draw your trend line. Yeah, it's kind of the trend lines right down over here and you can go, okay, boom. Rising wedge, falling wedge. Right here, this is where I don't play around with those crazy looking, remember I told you guys I don't really like those long wicks and shadows. Where would you maybe potentially look to get in again? Potentially down in here. Me personally, again, look at that inverted hammer, guys. It rejected at resistance. Now it comes down over here. Possible smaller candle risk right in here. Maybe look to go long as it's breaking out of what? A fallen wedge, right? Candlestick close below this as your stop. What do you do now? Draw your trend lines again. What is this? Rising wedge. What did this candle do? Right here. Warning, falling wedge. What did it do now? Right here, rising wedge, falling wedge, rising wedge, falling wedge. You guys follow me? Rising wedge, falling wedge. I'm, I'm all fired up with my coffee today. What the heck? Come on, that was gold. Go back. Look at that. So you want to talk about trend lines? Yup. That's not. You're gonna adjust them throughout the day, but if that's too much, day trading might not be a thing for you guys. Look, you're like what the heck is that? Again, that's where you'll reset drawings and all that stuff depending on your style. But kind of zoom in. 
Oh, what a mess. <laughs> my, my brain is going crazy now, right? So right here, go back here, kind of a falling wedge-ish, right? And you can see this is where it gets wonky. I don't like to play around with that, but you know, just kind of just reset these drawings. Just want to show you guys this, right? Connect the peaks and the valleys. Price goes up in the channel, reverses, comes back down and consolidates. Again, I like smaller candlesticks. I don't really play around with this stuff, but some people like to take a break out here and then they might consider taking their profits out in here, right? So that's a falling wedge. Rising wedge, falling wedge, rising wedge. Not perfect. Falling wedge. Rising wedge. Over and over and over and over again. If you are new and you don't know this, learn it and don't trade with real money. Best advice I could ever give you. What I'm giving you guys, again, I'll, I'll give a little annoying arrogance, is gold. The stuff is gold, guys. You can go pay somebody a chat room pumper, join their chat room service, let them pump penny stocks or whatever. Hey, buyer alerts. We do alert services, guys. We do options alerts. We do all that stuff. But just because that's great. We, we can give you trades and you can make money on it. But if you don't know this stuff, don't trade it. You know what I mean? This is, takes time to learn. You learn this stuff over and over and over again. Not only is it a skill set for you to learn with trading the stock market, you can manage your own 401k, your own IRAs, all that stuff. You don't have to buy mutual funds. You can buy and sell ETFs and trade a trading style, right? Go to a daily chart. Oh, we didn't know the stock market was going to crash. All right, well, here's a daily chart. Here's an earlier entry. What will I do? Let's connect the trend lines right out here or right here, right here, right? Connect the valleys out to the future. Connect some peaks right out here. And it's not the greatest, but whatever. It's a channel, right? Prices moving up and down in the channel. Well, nobody could have ever predicted that the stock market was going to fall. I showed you a monthly chart earlier, right? Here was the monthly look. Here was the monthly look. Look at that. See what I just showed you on a daily chart? Boom. Right here. There it is. It's as clear as day in front of you guys. Don't tell, oh boy. Don't tell me, financial advisors, this stuff doesn't make sense. That's a bunch of, you know what? This stuff works. And what do you guys see? Look. What are you seeing at resistance levels? Smaller consolidation candlesticks at resistance, right? What are you seeing down here? Buy at support, sell at resistance, right? Channel goes up and down and all around. And meanwhile, this is warning you for like, you know, <laughs> you have about a week, one, I don't even know how many, one, this would have probably faked people out like, oh, this is going to break above a rising wedge. What did it do? It screwed around with people right here. You're screwing like this is dangerous stuff, guys. Right. This is your entire 401k. Picture your entire net worth. You're 30, you're 40, you're 20 something years old. You have hundreds of thousands of dollars. And meanwhile, right here, your account, it's screaming at you right now. Whoa, this is overextended. This at least wants to probably pull back down to here at some point. God knows how much further. You had a week. You had a week warning right there. Warning, 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 warning. High bubble. I showed you guys. Boom. What did it do? It failed. Draw your trend line out here. So this extends to the future. Right down. Rising wedge. Falling wedge or megaphone pattern. And then voila, let's bring you back to the magic of what's going on now in the stock market. Absolutely a, <laughs> this is, 
depending on what side of it, this is a terrifying and makes you gasp candle right here. It makes you gasp. <clears throat> what candle am I referring to? If you're paying attention, right? What I've been telling you guys this entire time. That doji candle. That is terrifying if you want the market to go up. That's a terrifying candle. Now, so many things going on, guys. You know, if this was just your normal, typical market or whatever, uh, I would say we might be pretty screwed. I hear there's things going on and maybe buying of securities and all that, whole, whatever stuff. Again, people will say it's terrible if Trump and people are buying, the, you know, putting fake money. In. I Listen, I get it. I, you know, the system, it was much more broken prior to the past four years. It's been broken since back here. The entire system, guys, has been broken since back here. Many of this stuff, guys, is a bunch of garbage. I agree with, I agree with what many people are saying. QE, quantitative easing, propping the markets up, yada, yada, all that stuff. No matter what you want to say, I get it right? But the fact of the matter is, you know who's happy about this stuff? People that have 401ks, right? So wh whoever got destroyed back here, they don't care. They're probably like, bring on the quantitative easing. I want my 401k up here, right? You know, so people now that's like, oh, Trump, you know, you shouldn't put money into the market, you know, blah, 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 blah. I get whatever. If you don't like it, no matter what, but you know who does like it? People that have 401ks that got destroyed up here. So if you don't like it, my whole point being is, I don't know. If you start buying stuff, and I'm hearing that they might buy securities, no matter what you think about, if that's good or bad for the market, if you prop it back up with false stuff, hey, it might give people a chance to get back up here again. And then maybe, that's what I was showing you guys, maybe if we get back up here again, even if it's false illusion, fake stuff, whatever you want to call it, might give you a chance to potentially, if it goes back or when it does, get your money back up. And then if it fails this and starts showing, if you start seeing these spinning top, guys, take this in, I'm preaching right now, guys. If this market goes back up to here and you start seeing this, that's when you consider, I'm not telling you to do this if you have a 401k or these areas right here, you consider if you get all that money back, you might consider going safe. If you have a 401k, you may consider that and say, hey, you know, can you make more profits? Sure, of course you could. But you want to see this hold. This is resistance. You want to see it hold support. If we go back up here again, it may give you a chance to protect yourself again. Not telling you what to do with your 401k, but pay very close attention to these levels. If we start getting in here again, me personally, what I would do if my entire 401k was invested up there, I would be like, all right, you know what? I'm going to look at the candles, and if price can't get above these levels and hold, I might say, hey, screw it. Let it. I want to see it retest and hold and go up. This stuff scares the heck out of me, right? So this is what I'm trying to show you guys, those that have a 401k, watch this. Typically, when you see this warning candle, this is a warning it's going to want to come back down here. And God forbid, I'm telling you guys, you know, if it's it typically wants to come back down to here. And guys, what it typically wants to do when it fails that, then you got to start looking at these areas again as retest. And then if it fails this, look out. So for the sake of people's wealth, you want it to go up here. As a bear, hey, you know, potential good shorting opportunity but if if the fed comes in and jacks things up that's why i'm telling you because i don't know what the heck it's going to do this would be an epic trump has been talking about a big bounce right huge bounce well if he does it and he starts doing it now guys you know what? it doesn't matter what you think doesn't matter if you think it's right or wrong or whatever this bad boy could go into a huge v bottom he might v bottom this thing out and it could be an epic, epic. You want to talk about the bears getting screwed, huh? If he it epically bounces this thing back up again, look, there's a potential V, falling wedge, rising wedge. And then the magic question out in the future, if he does it, because I don't know. 
it may fall. Typically, rising wedges, they end up falling. But patterns fail all the time, guys. If he breaks it out and it continues up, the magic question is this. I didn't even get into penny stocks yet. <laughs> this right here, guys. If you start seeing consolidation up here, not telling you what to do with your funds, but just now you have some time to consider it. If you took the bath down here, it's a potential chance to reset and think about what happens up here. All I know is when price gets up here again, I want to see it up here holding. I want to, see, and then I want to see a nice trend, right? I want to see it hold and a nice trend, look for confirmation, and then ride that trend up. And then these lines again, they go out to the future. If I start, hey, if I got in long and I'm aggressive here and they start bouncing off resistance way out here, I might say, huh, maybe I won't go risky again. I'll wait for a hit to hit support. Telling you guys, is this making sense? I'll go to penny stocks. This is, wow, this is a rant. Whew. Yes, I'm going to put this on YouTube. I have to tell you guys this stuff. If you put this stuff together, I know it's long. I know it's a rant, but this is, I, I, I can't tell you. This is stuff you're not being told. And it makes me so angry. I'm not going to go on a rant. I'm going to stop my rant. No, a little rant. Remember, I said it to you guys before. I'll say it again. 2020 happened. 2008 financial crisis happened. Dot com bubble happened. Candlestick patterns do not lie. Are you guys starting to be a believer? Does this make sense to you now? Can I get an amen? Somebody out there, tell me. Is this, you guys see how this is not hocus pocus? This is everything. Everything with the stock market. Amen. Thank you. All right. Penny stocks. All right. Let me roll up my sleeves. I got to go out and make a, uh, I got to go make a grocery store run and put my mask on and do that whole good thing after this. But I got to give it to you guys. I got to give it to you here. And <clears throat> let's look at the two stocks I was showing you guys in the previous video on trend lines. Amen. Love it, guys. All right. We're going to go for it. AGS. So you say, how does this work with penny stocks compared to the SPY? Obviously, penny stocks, this is actually not a bad looking one. Uh, you know what? Let's actually just go to my good old favorite. Let's, when all else fails, I showed you ACB. Here's your penny stock, guys. Your Canadian darling penny stock. Oh, boy. <laughs> Roger, you got her. Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. Man, you know what? I say don't at me when I'm doing this and wait to the end, but that's worth the at. That's a great question, Roger. He says... Say you got out of your 401k at the doji and the government gets acti activity moving market up. Where should you consider getting back in for a cash position? He said the magic word. I got it. I got it. It's going to be a long webinar, guys. It's going to be a long webinar. This is stuff, right? This is this means everything. <clears throat> Cash. He said the magic question of cash. That's a great question, guys. Cash. Should you ever be cash in your 401k? Some of you are probably like, this guy's crazy. Why would I ever go cash? Well, let me ask you this. If you were cash up here and the market full, fell down here, sure, you could have made some extra profit up here. But guess what would have happened? You wouldn't have lost down here. You would have kept it cash here. Watch for the bounce. Maybe go risky down here again. You buy low, sell high. You feeling me, guys, here? This is the game. Ask. Here's a test. Hey, Mr. Talk to your financial advisor. Ask them, hey, how do you feel if for a month or two or for a period of time, maybe, maybe, not saying to do this, maybe there's times you may want to go cash you may want to go cash at peak levels and then consider going maybe aggressive again consider going aggressive again maybe you go 
cash for a period of time. Consider going risky. Buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. Maybe you consider going cash. Maybe you consider going cash. Maybe you consider going aggressive. Buy low, sell high. Are you feeling me? Is this making sense? Now, here's the thing I try to tell you guys. Here's the test. Here's the magical, magical test. Talk to whoever manages your 401k and say, hey, can I go cash at some point? Not saying to do cash, but ask them about the question, the discussion, have a discussion. How do you feel if I ever go cash for a period of time? See what they say. See how they react. This is your money. If they give you a hard time and you feel like you should be cash because you see something clearly, because you know candlestick patterns. And I tell you this because I've ranted before and I was ranting back here. I know of very large brokers of at least one from personal experience that threatened my account when a market was at a level like this because I wanted to go cash. True story. Not going to see the broker. Happened at least twice. It may have been a third time. I don't remember if three times. Definitely twice. I said, hey, even back here, let's say right here, I might say, hey, guys, man, this is at the top of a, right, even back here. So right here, I'm going to say, you know what, guys, I, I made the videos. I'm going to say it again. I made the videos back for you in December. I said, guys, I warned everybody back here. I say it over and over again. I said, be careful over here going into 2020. It's an election year. What happened last time something like this happened? The financial crisis happened going into an election year. Not saying there's coincidences, but just be careful, right? <laughs> Whoo, all right. Um, I got to check myself sometimes, guys. I got to check myself and the things I say. So I said, guys, if you went risk safe up here, could you give back some profits if it goes up? Sure. Top of a rising wedge pattern at resistance. And so when I talked to broker my broker that was you know when market was at a peak like this man oh man i need a video card or something um they threatened to cancel my account and they would allow me to, to they'd allow that to happen here's some you know just some basic you know just so let's just say you had a hundred thousand dollars in your brokerage account or your 401k and just say whatever the market was at whatever just say it's 320 and you were cash at that time and the market fell to 220 you lost a hundred dollars let's say per share whatever mutual funds you got all that stuff you're down a hundred bucks would you now looking down here say hey man i wish i was in cash up there i wouldn't have taken a 30 percent drop i wouldn't have given back let's say thirty thousand dollars now, they tell you it'll go back up here again, which it will at some point, but who knows? It might take months or years. How long will it take you to get that $30,000 back? Sure, you can keep buying down here again and buying other stuff, but now you're starting from a 70000 right? 100000 minus 30000 Now you have 70000 down here. Now you're starting to add on, just again, regular, giving you some numbers. You're capitalizing on $70,000 to grow it back up again. What if you kept your 100,000 down here because you're in cash up here. Now you're building on top of that 100,000 down here. Common sense, guys. Common effing sense. But it's not so common in this industry. Ask your broker again. This is my brand. Man, I just ranted on brokers again. Ask your financial advisor if you could ever be in cash and if there's ever any... Is there any ever a reason to do so? If they say no, here's your secret weapon, guys. If they say no, you should never ever be in cash or take a pause, then they're probably not looking out for your best interest. They're probably looking out for their best interest, not yours. Because doesn't lie, guys. If you were cash out here, you can start building back down here.
All right. So, oh, people, if the connection is weak on social media, I am recording this and I'll upload it. All right. I'm going to do penny stocks, guys. I'm just going to go for it. It's going to be a long one. We'll look at a daily chart of ACB, Canadian pot stock, right? All time highs way up here. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Remember I was telling you penny stocks, it gets hairy, really, cra really crazy stuff, right? Here we go. Horizontal line, prices at all time highs. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Pay close attention. If you're swing trading penny stocks, me personally, I'm not a fan of it. I don't have the cojones for it <laughs> unless you get a good entry if you get an entry down in here sure okay you know but like you gotta have some buy the rumor sell the news and you see these candlesticks get bigger and bigger and bigger all-time highs what did it do falls back down now you're kind of caught up in here you can say well that's a bull bull flag well yeah sure it is you know, but look at, again, the risk. The risk is much bigger out here on that bull flag right here. And look, you have one candle on a daily. What did, why did this, what is this candle, guys? It's a doji, it's a spinning top. Why did it create this candle? Because this candle couldn't break above this candle. So you have a double top reversal and boom, Jadunzo falls right back down, right? Buy low, sell high. Buy the rumor, sell the news. What did people do up here? They sold the news. So that's why if you ask yourself or you're caught up in stuff like this, why did my 401k drop? Like, Bob, or I'm sorry, why did uh, pot stocks uh, tank after the legalization? There's probably some legalization news here because people bought the rumor, they pumped it up and they sold the news. They bought the rumor, they sold the news, right? Can't fault them. Now there's some people pumping it up and then it's also just traders taking their profit. Small candlesticks. What did it do? Falls back down. Trend lines, guys, right? Create the trend lines. Back up again. What is this? Rising wedge. Here's a bigger candle. That's a bullet bearish engulfing. Again, take our course. We'll teach you that. What did it do? Fell back down. Rising wedge, not really a wedge here, kind of a falling channel. And then, uh, you know, you guys kind of can see right out here, right? You can see. You guys see right here, kind of a rising wedge pattern right up in here hit some resistance, started to fall. Then it kind of falls again. It's a reset. I'm starting to see circles here. <laughs> or uh, <clears throat> you guys see kind of like, see kind of a falling pattern there, or you can kind of connect here. Oh, I'm just, guys, I'm just doing, connecting the peaks and the valleys, right? Find the channels. That resistance, what did it do? Obviously, so right here, it's support as it's falling. It really didn't hit support very well, but you could have looked at this and said, you know, you got, it's, you see how the candles are much bigger out here. Why are the candles so much bigger out there than they are down here? Because it's buy the rumor, sell the news, buy support, sell resistance. If you get an entry way back here, you could hold throughout this guys i don't have the cojones to do it i don't heck no i ain't dealing with this no way i'm finding this again but guys look it's it's very where's the small candlesticks it took a while i probably would have looked back down over in here maybe you know i'd start to look at it over in here and you can see right connect the I don't even know this kind of like it's such a sloppy you 
know, you can find these kind of trends and stuff, you know, and then connect this support level out here. I may have considered here, and then you can see kind of it breaks out. And what does it kind of do? You know, it kind of, again, another, what is this right here? Patterns, guys. What is this? That's a double top. What is this? It's basically a double top. Even though this top's above it, it's still doing the same kind of thing. Double top. What is this? Double top. You know? Tweezer tops right here. And then, uh, so it just keeps going over and over and over and over again look for potential entries out here get the heck out up here you can see it's just nuts this is just it's absolutely nuts maybe again look for potential entry down here as price breaks out as price breaks above this candle you go long short below this or close below this as your stop get the heck out on that candle get out you know um break above one of these two candles i mean i probably would have been the heck out on this candle right here you can see it's it's much crazier guys right the candles are huge buy the rumor sell the news go back again where do you look again maybe Small candles, right? Support levels. I'd look at it there. I'd potentially look in here. This is a different pattern, so I would actually definitely probably look at this. This is kind of a piercing pattern. And then, like, guys, I'm get the heck out. Heck yeah, get the heck out. That's a bearish engulfing candle. So if you got in on this candle right here at the break, get the heck out over there. That's terrible. Get out. And then, uh, <clears throat> you know, again, just kind of looking at these candles as price is falling. Why would I maybe look at a candle like this? Let's go to our trend tools, right? Support resistance patterns. What is this pattern? If you guys are paying attention, falling wedge. What did price do? Starts to break out, create a new trend right here you potentially potentially go long here close below this as your stop where do you get the heck out you get the heck out as it's breaking the trend that red candle where would you look to potentially re-enter again right down in here it's a bigger candle but again just showing you guys where you'd potentially look to go again and uh, that's not You know, kind of like this, guys, right? What is this? Rising, what? Falling wedge, rising wedge, falling wedge, or pennant, if you want to call it pennants. Again, pennants, wedges, very similar thing, guys, right? Hit support as it breaks out. Considering going long at the break of this candle, then you got to look at all these other resistance levels. You got to start saying, okay, uh, consolidation in here. I might decide to get out. This is definitely a, a reversal pattern, but you know, pop. All right, consolidation. All right, that makes me nervous. Whoa, definitely getting out on that one. You still profit, but buy low, sell high, right? Small candlestick patterns. Right up here, these are green candlestick patterns. But look, they're warning candles. Why are they warning candles? There's several green days, right? Several green days, probably a pump or who the heck knows. Moves up in the channel, falls out of the channel. Buy low, sell high. As price pulls back, 
you look for potential potential re-entries as you do your channels, right? Falling wedge, small candle, risk on the potential breakout of this candle to go long, close below this as your stop. <clears throat> Where do you decide to get out? Well, you know, depending on how long you want to stay in the trade, draw your trend line. That's a mega foam pattern. You'll see there's lots of similarities. It goes up and down, up and down, staying in here. I would have been out myself up there, definitely out over here. I would have probably considered it over here. Again, I don't like to hold long, especially with penny stocks like this. I'm taking my profits. I'm trading these in and out. So me personally, I would, I would day trade penny stocks. I'm not a huge penny stock trader, to be honest. But, um, you know, for me personally, I'm, I'm like, here's what I would do. You know what I mean? If I'm trading penny stocks, I'm in this candle. I'm probably selling this one. Maybe I'm out. Here, I'm the heck out. I'm gone. Bye-bye. And then I'm waiting for this to form. That's kind of a pennant. And then I'm back in over on this green candle right here. And then I'm obviously looking to see if price can break above here. But I'm I'm day trading these in and out in and out. If I was to hold a little bit longer, I'm out in a day or two. I'd probably get out on this candle. I ain't, I don't have I I don't like dealing with that stuff, guys. I'm in and out. And now just go to uh, a daily or intraday, and we'll wrap this up. <coughs> this is a long webinar. <laughs> uh This is way more than trading reversal patterns, I think. There's a lot, <laughs> there's more trend lines and stuff. But hey guys, repetition is the key, right? All right. This, as you, like I was telling you guys, so you map out pre-market highs and resistant. Oh, man, I'm giving you some more. <laughs> map out pre-market highs and lows and support and resistance levels, you know, when you're day trading. You know, I'm not going to go back over here, but that's kind of mapping out your highs and lows. See what happens. Market opens. Look for volume. Look for news. All that stuff. <clears throat> and you'll see right over in here, guys. This is the This is the crap I don't play around with. Let that, I ain't dealing with that. But what it does is it forms patterns. And so now I can kind of, you know, it's just, this is not a great one. You'll see a penny stocks, it becomes a little bit more difficult because you get whipsawed around, you know, with these wicks and shadows. But obviously like right in here, you can see a channel start to form. Or if you want to do like this, you know, rising wedges, falling wedges, right? Falling, not a wedge, but a megaphone, right? Falling, rising, falling, rising, right? So as price, you know, me personally, I ain't playing around with this stuff. I would look, here's where I'm looking at it. I'm starting to really look at it here because I'm looking for a potential anticipation of a break of pre-market high. You have consolidation and you have a basically an ascending wow oh, for crying out loud dan if you're listening i need my computer fixed <laughs> ascending triangle right here huge pad bull flags bear flags ascending triangles descending triangles very important right so i show this right here small candlesticks right in anticipation of a break by at support levels at the base of angular support, you look to potentially get in at the break. You know, if you're not in down here at the break and hold of the break of this ascending triangle, and you'll see it breaks out and then it kind of retests, right? What when resistance breaks, many times it's be support, retest happens, and either it's going to break above resistance or it's going to fail, right? You'll see in this instance again. 
I'm using a break above this candle, somewhere close below this as my stop. And then, like I told you, you could ride the nine, but remember I was saying, you gotta be careful because the candles get nuts with a lot of these penny socks. And this is where you can give up a lot of profits. I'm looking here for potential long. When I start seeing this, I'm the heck out. It's near resistance. I watch for a retest and as you can see, it's not so hot at the moment, these candles are bigger. So then what I do is I kind of just redo and I keep those horizontal. Remember I was teaching you guys horizontal support and resistance levels, right? They're still there on my chart. What do I do? I put another one right up here, high a day consolidation, right? What do I do now? Let's go find those channels, channel down, kind of like, it's not the greatest, but right here, kind of a channel. But remember guys, right? We go back to those trend lines. See right here, connect this base. It goes out over here. All right, support may be holding here, guys. This is where, okay, it's consolidating below. So it failed pre-market highs up here, came down, failed. Now it may be looking to take a run again. You may consider getting in at the break here again in anticipation of a new high a day break. And then you can see more consolidation right here, right? Hindsight's 2020. You don't necessarily know that's gonna break out because that could become a double top failure and fall back down. You look at support level, but what happens? It goes and breaks out. Now you could potentially, you can stay in a little bit longer if you have your entry down here. If you started getting your entry up here, this is where it starts getting hairy and it's like, oh boy, you know, this is where you gotta be careful. And then what does it do? It breaks out. And then this, you're getting the heck out. Look at these candles up here. When you start seeing that red candle, you know, you're getting out. I probably would have gotten shook out myself. I would have been out over here because I see a tweezer top. That's a reversal. I'm the heck out. So I, I would take this. I would scalp this. I'm out. I'm looking for re-entry again where I'd look basically in these areas. Like that hammer, you can see it doesn't break. But then what does it do here? Right here, hold support, right? Breaks out, retest support. Support, resistance, pattern, support, resistance, patterns. I can't tell you important how important that is. Draw your trend lines, connect them right over here to here, to basically here. What do you have? A rising channel. Why did it reject up here? It rejected because what? It's at resistance. It's a new high a day. I put another level up there. Comes back down, retest this area here, gets a bounce. What did it do up here? Small little candle at resistance. Pretend that's a spy on a daily chart and it goes back up to all over time, over. Uh, all time highs again, remember I was telling you when we get that, let's say we get this huge bounce and it goes back up here. If you start seeing this and you start seeing this stuff, look out. <clears throat> and then what does it do? Sorry guys, I'm taking some water. Falling channel, rising channel, falling channel, right? over and over and over again. And that's where you look. You look for these little reversals. You know, you look at, uh, yeah, look, see right here. See the, All right? Goes up, consolidation, those small candles near resistance near support, obviously there's more, there's consolidation candles, because there's resistance. It breaks out again, you have the channel, you know, you see again, right, you know, again, there's all these other channels in between here, but then you see, again, you start seeing the stuff, right? Price starting to, right, now you're connecting, it's hitting resistance, what did it do? It fell back down, right? Then the candles get bigger down here, and then you just go ahead of time. If you missed here, again, you connect your drawings. Out oh, here we go. 
over and over and over again. What do you guys see here? Falling wedge, rising wedge, or pattern, whatever you want to call it. Finding rising wedge, whatever you want to call it. And what happened up here? Small candlesticks. Why? At resistance of a rising wedge. What happened? It broke the trend line. It fell. What happened down here? Smaller candle. Why? Because look, falling wedge, what did it do? Off of support. Breaks out, right? Then you have consolidation. <clears throat> Why are these small little consolidation candles happening? Well, it's at resistance levels. Then it, what does it happen down here? It's at support levels, right? It's forming these other patterns. And then what do you do? You just showing you guys day trading, guys. You know, I mean, this is, it applies to any stock. Reset. Now the patterns form throughout the day. What do you do? Connect the peaks and valleys, right? Peaks all the way down. You can do it out like this, but then you could also kind of zoom in over here, kind of, you know, kind of zoom forward. You guys see that, you know? Kind of falling wedge, kind of pattern coming down. You have, oh, Here's a, I was gonna say these could be algos, but it's actually before lunchtime. You have all that consolidation right in here. And then, <clears throat> cause look guys, why is this happening? It's struggling to hold support and it's struggling to break out of resistance. And you can see there was a lot of fake out candles over here, right? And then what did it do? So you had gotten faked out probably on this candle, but it actually, there was no candle that broke that one yet, but sometimes you'll get a little fake outs and then it retests, right? It comes out, retests, what does it do now? Now it's holding right here, boom. Now you're holding support right over in here. Now where do you look at it again? Right here. And then boom. Go long at the break of this candle as the break out of the falling wedge. Now, when do you get out? Well, you decide, right? It, nice, beautiful breakout. You might want to consider taking your profit at the top of flagpoles, but that's up to you. Look at resistance zones. There was consolidation. Hindsight's 2020. obviously. You're probably taking your profit throughout here. Uh, but if you didn't, what did it do? You get into the break of this candle again. And then it's over and over and over again. New trend, hit support, resistance. Support levels, resistance levels. Consolidating back down here. What do you have here, guys? Basically a flag. Boom, it breaks out again. What do you have down over in here? Flag breakout. Now you can see the candles get more crazier, right? One, this is a beautiful one. First and second pullback pretty decent, gets a little bit hairier at third. And then you had all of this. It starts breaking and the consolidation again. You get out, it's failing support. And then what time is this at? Traders probably taking lunch for a while. And then you just kind of reverse it down. And for those of you peeps that like bearish plays, so you have this high a day up here. You can see some consolidation down in these areas, down in here, down in here. So, you know, and you can kind of draw your. down channel, right? Horizontal. Now we're putting it together, guys. You seeing this? We're putting it together. Putting it all together. Horizontal and angular support and resistance levels. 
And then you start looking, you see these channels, what happened over here affects the future. And then you can see just there's other patterns within these patterns. But, you know, some people will like to, you know, again, some people will like to short as it's hitting these levels, you know, and take it on the way down because lower highs are being formed. And others like to find, you know, like the entries of smaller, take it as short on the way down. You know, they might not like dealing with these candles. They want to take something clearer. Or you could wait for like support levels down in these areas to potentially hold. And then um, again, it's a matter of your preference. And then you can kind of draw them back, you know, right here. There's a basically a bear flag. So you can see price is getting up near resistance. You might consider taking a short down here. And as it's falling, might look to cover down your support if you want. Or just keep waiting until the trend's broken. And as you can see, you know what I mean? It still kept falling. Again, you know, you're going to take profits too early, of course. Many times we always say you don't get broke. You don't go broke taking a profit. <laughs> but uh, again, there's... Whew, my brain is fried right now, guys. This is a long webinar. I got to stop this right now and ask if you guys have any questions that is a heck of a lot of information <clears throat> what you got you guys got anything for me here let me take a look at some of your comments what was the reason for ah uh, max has a or had a really good question that's a very good question max says what was the reason for trying to cancel your account great so what ah oh, perfect there's a reason why i'm back here what was the reason for uh, my that the major firm that was threatening to cancel my account? The reasoning was the typical lecture of, uh, well, we can't do that, sir. You know you're in it for the long haul, sir. You know, blah blah blah. You know the typical, right? Sir, sir, sir. You get the lecture, and I said, I, guys, I know. I mean, I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to stay cash for the rest of my life. I would never buy a stock up here. So why the hell would I have, heck, <laughs> why would I have my uh, entire 401k at risk up here? But remember guys, they're probably, what is their reasoning for it? I don't know, is their motives pure or they have different intentions? I don't know, maybe a rep has a canned response over the phone on what to tell me, or maybe I'm worried, they're worried if I go cash, I'm just gonna move my funds to one of their brokers so they get to give me hand slaps. But bottom line, my best interest up in here would have been cash. I buy low and then I sell high. I buy low, I sell high. I go potentially risky and then I go potentially safe. All right? I'll stop that rant. Yeah, so Facebook comment is it's much easier to look at a completed completed chart and tell when you should have gotten out. It's much harder to determine when a candle's forming. That's where the skill comes in again. Yes. So that's where again I showed you guys on a monthly, right? That's the monthly chart. But guys, remember this is where if you want to go sooner, go back to weekly. Now you get some warnings right over in here. You know, this is oh heck. Where's my drawing? Here's a weekly chart. Same thing, guys. Terrifying. Terrifying. Bearish Harami. Bearish Harami. What's a bearish Harami, you ask? Very good question. This is actually not a great, it's not a great, I wish I had a different picture of this. But it's similar. Again, it's a perfect example of patterns are not all perfect, but you have a bearish candle inside of a bullish one, right? What is this? A bearish candle on top of a bullish one at all, you know, at resistance levels, right? What do you mean resistance? Well, trend lines, bearish Harami, bye-bye. Okay, let's reset, right? New channel, buyers back up. What happened here? Bearish Harami, there we go, bye-bye. 
warning, warning, weekly candle. Ah, oh, man, I, I missed it on the weekly. Okay, we already talked about that, right? Let's go back to the daily now, take another step back, go to a daily chart. And <coughs> where was the warnings? Warnings was like, hey, -o, be careful. And you can say, here was previous all time highs back here. And then it kind of starts creeping up over here. Hey, -o, warning, 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 warning. This is warnings. This channel supports being tested. Warning, going into an election year. Common sense, guys. Election year 2020, not normal year. There's lots of emotions going on, good and bad. Think common sense. All right, let's see what else you guys got. Can we use a strategy with day trading options? Absolutely, because what you guys do, guys, this is just a chart. This is a chart. Everything I showed you is a chart. How you trade you know, what strategy you trade is up to you, right? Just remember the volatility, that's where, you know, depending on your, you know, trading style, if you're just buying naked calls and puts, right? You know, the riskiest strategy, but very profitable. If you're trying to buy naked calls and puts through this stuff, it's gonna be hairy, you know what I mean? It's gonna be very, your stomach's gonna turn, you know, it's just, it's just crazy, right? Spreads, different story. But, you know, if you get a clear, you know, if you're buying a put, just a naked put, as price is failing that, failing that bear flag, that's nice. It's still going to have some craziness down here, but that's a nice drop, you know. If you're buying calls, you know, on an uptrend or, you know, just say like, You know, you buy a call here, you know, it's a nice little move up. You know, as it's starting to go up, it's still moving up. Again, you got the Greeks and all that that go with it. But um, but that's, you know, just naked calls and puts. You ideally want to see a strong trend up or a strong trend down if you're buying naked calls and puts. Then you have spread strategies with stocks trading sideways and all this stuff. And there's other times, guys, you might just say, like, listen, I'm taking a knee. I might either day trade or if I'm trying to take positions, you might take a knee here. You might say, whoa, give me some strong confirmation. I ain't playing around with any of that stuff right now. You know, you could do spreads, but or day trade. But like, I mean, day trading and stuff, it's hairy. Look at these candles. You know, there's times you might take a knee and say, hey, I'll study. Hey, I'll day trade or I'll do a different strategy. Again, we teach all these different strategies in our community. But my whole point being is this is a chart. What you do with the chart is up to you. Mitigate your risk. How do you mitigate your risk? Risk. You look at the small candles. Risk, you know, again, if you're shorting stuff, you're looking to short off of small candles. When you're longing stuff, you're looking to long off of small candles, right? Small candles. Small candles. This one right here, though, whew, we'll see what happens. Uh, can I take a look at the spy from yesterday? There was a drop in the afternoon and then it partially reversed at the end of the day. If you shorted that, where would you have covered? So here's another, here's a perfect example, guys. Spy yesterday going into Good Friday with coronavirus. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, you know. You gotta be so careful because I, I don't trust anything going on. Like, I mean, the candles are nasty, right? Uh, were you looking at this one right here in the afternoon at, what is that, 1.30? What time were you uh, referring to SAFTAB? Okay, if you were looking at, let's say at this one right here, high a day, if you took a bearish position there, and you took a short or whatever type of when you have to buy in a put or whatever bearish strategy you have, you take a short below this, close below above that as your stop. And then I'm just taking my trend line right here. I 
I mean, guys, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. You could get shooken out there. You know, this is a potential bullish harami pattern. You could get shook out here if you're short. Down here, down here. It all depends. These are profit zones that you could take profit, right? You definitely want to get out as it if it breaks out of these areas. <clears throat> so officially, you know, when it's here, I would get the heck out. But remember, you have the Greeks, you have all these things. If you're doing options, there's all these other things, the whipsaws and what you're dealing. If you're just straight shares, like if you were just like shorting shares, then you might be comfortable just kind of sticking until it goes out here. If you're dealing with options, that's a whole other story, right? So if you're strictly shares in a stock, you get out over here. But there's earlier warnings down over in here. And it all depends on what how much profit you want to make. Me personally, guys, I I'm 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 I like my profits. I like to get in, get out. You know, so I might, you know, I might short cover, you know, as it's rejecting. I don't like these candles, but you know, I wish there was a better setup. I'm I'm kind of covering, look for re-entry, short back down, covering, look for re-entry, cover. So like instead of staying in it longer, I'm probably would go one, two, maybe three trades. Again, I don't really like those candles. Well, those are five minute candles, but on a one minute, let's say if I'm trading, that's, you know, I'm kind of taking it down with it. But if you don't have that time to day trade it, you want to be in it a little bit longer, just kind of just ride the trend down. And as it's breaking, uh, that falling wedge or that falling channel, get out. Does that make sense? All right, Roger, happy Easter. Yep. All right, guys, I am officially tapped out. I couldn't keep it under two hours. I'm done. <laughs> uh, so those that are watching on social media, I'll put the replay up of this later. <laughs> I'll catch you guys all later. Enjoy. Trade room peeps.